How's it going folks? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Quick shout out to Green Trees with Celtic Roots. Today's guest is Mr. James Galbraith of Reptile Gems, Pythons and Boas. He's working with some Huffman projects and Super Huffman that not a lot of people are working with out there. He's going to show us some of that today. He's also going to tell us a little bit about what it's like entering shows and becoming a vendor at shows for your first time and how he got to start in the hobby and all that good stuff they always talk to people about turn on Triple B TV that's what we're gonna do you're watching Triple B TV Since this is your first time on, I gotta ask you, how did you get into keeping? So I had a, <clears throat> when I was in eighth grade, I had a science teacher that had berms, rattlesnakes, boas, all kinds of stuff in his class. And at that time, I had no reptiles. Always tried to talk, you know, my parents into, <clears throat> you know, get me a boa. Um, always wanted a boa since I was a little, or a lizard, or just some sort of reptile. I was always trying to sneak lizards and frogs and stuff in the house, which is pretty much typical with everybody, you know? Well, that science teacher taught me that you can understand a reptile's behavior and learn to kind of mimic it to do what you want. So, you know, to calm it down, uh, feeding responses, you know, kind of mimic its behavior. And I always thought that was fascinating. So, after a long time, <laughs> my going from freshman to my junior year in high school, uh, my friends that I was hanging out with were getting into drugs and stuff really bad. And my mom knew that I kind of excluded myself from the group. And, you know, lunches, those long lunches of standing there, not really, you know, hanging out with anybody and kind of that. Well, for my birthday, um, they said, well, what do you want? And so I told my dad, and I said that, I go, I want a snake, I want a boa. And he goes, all right, well, go ahead and write me a letter of why you think you deserve one. Well, at that time, I had like three years of research. I mean, I knew everything that could, you know, you could know about a boa. Wrote it down, and I told them about my friends and getting into drugs and how I stepped off, and that's why I wasn't going over to anybody's houses for so long and all that. He had no clue. My mom didn't tell him anything. This, this says a lot about you to be able to step away from that. Like, yeah, it was tough. Yeah. And so it was a tough year. But so we had a local reptile show in Petaluma, like two months later after my birthday, and my dad goes, my stepdad goes, yeah. Let's go ahead and we'll get you a boa. And so I remember that show is the first reptile expo I ever been into. You know, now bending shows and stuff like that. Now for the last year, it's crazy to think like I was on the other side of that table for. So it kind of helps you interact with people. But first booth I went to, I grabbed a Burmese python and I held it up and it coiled back and started hissing and stuff. And I looked back and my stepdad and my friend that went were like four feet behind me and they're just like, no. And I was just like, this is cool. You know what I mean? And they're like, no. So I set it down. Went to another booth, saw a boa that was het stripe or but at that time I had no clue what any of the morphs or genetics or anything like that meant. And so I was like, I want this one, but it was like 175, I think, and I had 140 in my pocket, cash. So my birthday present was they buy the cage, but I had to buy the snake. So I looked at the breeder and I've always been, if that's your price, that's your price. I'm not a person like, you know, I bought stuff from Jimmy at Ball Life and I always tell him, you know, that's it, all right, yeah, I'll pay that. Whatever you're asking, I'll pay it. So That's good, because I feel like there's a lot of people out there just try to lowball every single time they make all this. No. Everything's gonna be lowball, lowball, but just no, trying like to get the price. If you have something yeah. on the table and it's reasonable, you know, within the market, yeah, why, I know how long it takes to produce that, to feed it, to care, and I know what goes into it. So the guy is like 175 and I looked and he let me hold her and everything. And uh, I don't know if you saw my eyes light up or how excited I was and I put it back and he goes, you don't want her? And I go, I only have 140 and I'm not gonna, you know, lowball you. And uh, <clears throat> so the guy looked at my stepdad to see if he would, you know, pay the difference. And my stepdad said, no, this is on him. We bought the cage, this is, you know, his deal. And I go, well, let me look around and I'll see, you know what I mean? And he goes, you know what, kid? He goes, the way you looked at her, here you go, 140 bucks is yours. And I still have her to this day. She's about nine and a half feet. She's, she's fat for a boa, but I'm like, you know what? She's old, just feed her whatever she wants and let her cruise around when I'm cleaning. And, but she's definitely, I mean, it's, it's like your halo. She's my, you know, animal icon. Everybody, everybody comes over. It's, where's Roxanne at? Pull Roxanne out. Let me see Roxanne because I mean, she's, her head is just, I mean, she's a big, big boa. 
like Brian Dundee's uh, big mama. Right. She's like that size. So okay, she's, wow. She's that's a, a big, big yeah, that's a big boa. She's pushing nine and a half, ten feet. So she's a big girl. And she's, you know. Good. So she's, she's big. But <laughs> that's pretty That's kind of how I got started. And then started watching videos with uh, Brian Barcheck on YouTube, JKR, which I'm actually right next to. So it's kind of cool. But oh, your, your booth is right next to right, right next now? to JKR, oh, yeah. Sweet. So I'm like, oh, a little fish. And I got this big fish right next to me. But he's been super cool. I actually loaned him some ARS cages to help him with his display. So that was kind of a cool feeling. But um, so I watched all his videos and I started learning genetics and started, you know, doing what I could to get in there and uh, got a, uh, invested some money that couldn't, shouldn't really have spent at the time, but I was like determined to start doing this, you know? And so called uh, Ryan Barcheck. He helped me out back when he wasn't so busy with YouTube. So he actually had more time to talk to people back then. And uh, I got a, <clears throat> a butter mail, I got some head pied pear, and then a couple corn snakes, which is bad to say, but I cannot keep corn snakes alive. And I know every time, you know, somebody says, you can't keep a corn that's snake alive, don't keep reptiles. Yeah, that's kind of, I say that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard you say that in your video, that's what I'm saying, but I've tried twice, and I just, I don't know why. Maybe just a couple times bad luck. If it happens the third time, then you know something. I'm not trying a third time, because I don't want to put that juju third on Third time's me. the charm, though. That's the way it works. But third I mean, time. I have blood pythons, I have dumerals boas, I mean, I have species that they say are, you know, more difficult. More, more advanced than a, than a corn snake. That's interesting. So that's weird. really interesting. I'd be really interested to see what and why that's happening, because that's... I don't know. They, of course, they're like bulletproof. Maybe like I should try <laughs> now that I'm more advanced and keeping and I understand better, but who knows. But, uh... Well, I had a falling out. My animals I got from Brian Barcheck didn't make it. I ordered some stuff from Bob Clark at the same time. I still have the pet uh, pied from Bob Clark, and Brian Barcheck stuff didn't work out. So I don't know what it was or what, you know, things like that. And, you know, I emailed them, called them, never got back here, anything like that. And a few years down the road, I just, like, you know, he's busy. I, I didn't care. Like, I'm not a person. I'm not going to go after you and slant your name or, you know, make, you know, grief for you when my situation might be different than everybody else's. So I called him when he had that video of all the stuff of people hating on him and stuff, you know, and I say, this is what happened to me, you know what I mean? Just saying it's not something that happened to everybody, but just an incident I had. And I'm not saying it's your fault. So he personally called me back and I was like, mission mode. And I answered it and I never answer numbers. And he goes, James? And I go, yeah, he goes, this is Brian. And I go, oh, what's up, man? He goes, oh, I just got your email. He goes, I'm really sorry to say that happened. You know, my crew that I had back then, it just got mixed up. He goes, what can I do for you? And I go, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, that was three years ago. Like, you know, he goes, you go to my website, you pick something out, and I'll take care of it. And I was like, okay. So it was a super pastel fire pinstripe female. And I was, oh, that's cool, because I had some males and stuff, you know. But it was an $800 snake. I spent 400 with them three years ago. And I was like, I don't really see anything that I need now where I'm at, but there is one thing I like, but it's way more than what I ever spent with you. So I get it. I mean, if there's something I'm in the market for, you know, we can definitely go that way down the road. And uh, he goes, what's your address? So I told him, and I got a tracking info in the mail. He sent me the animal. So I was just, right then and there, it was just kind of a, you know, like, and I've always been that type of person. I don't judge somebody until I personally deal with them. So I, in the reptile community, you know, I did a small tracing show, tiny little show, and I looked across, and it was Jimmy from Ball Life. I got little deli cups. I mean, I got no sign, a tablecloth that doesn't even cover the table, and he rolls in. I'm like, oh, God. And I was just right then and there, I was like, oh, man, this could be bad. Like, <laughs> That's because that's the first time I met Jimmy and he walked in the room, I was like, oh, I had the similar feeling. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I look over, I'm like, oh, shit, dude, that fool's like a gangster. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I was like, whatever, you know. And so we started talking and stuff, and I did great. I sold most of all my animals. had a great show. And awesome. I mean, I was up in, like, the top five of, like, sales in that show. Nice. And so I told Jimmy what I did, and he goes, what? And I go, yeah. And he goes, all right. He goes, you need to do the kimono. He goes, you need to get the tablecloth, get the banner, do all this stuff. So I literally followed his steps. And, you know, looking back on my first booth to now, he, you know, like he said, he created a monster. Because I'm just, every show, something new is coming. 
like one show I have flashing It's interesting to hear you say that like that because Jimmy shared a similar story about his own experience, first experience here. Yeah, it's similar to what you just me, described yep. with, him, with him there. So that's, that's interesting to see that come full circle like that. Yeah, right? so he, you know, he told me the same thing. He goes, I was put with the sharks, like the same terminology, you know. He goes, I forget the people he was around, but they were bigger names, you know. And he goes, it's either sink or swim. And he goes, in this business, he goes, a hobby, really. He goes, you sink or swim. You do it because you love it. And if you're successful, it's because you love it. You know, you don't produce the animal. Oh, this is a thousand dollar animal. No, this is an animal that I hatched, I care for, I raise, you know. If what, it what, do you, what do you have there? Are you rolling? You got a red dot? <laughs> <laughs> so this right here is a Huffman ghost. So the Huffman gene, there's a lot of breeders that, from what I understand, are working with the gene, but there's not a lot of actual pictures and descriptions and stuff like that of it. I don't have anything of just a single gene that I can show you. Um, so that is just a single gene Huffman ghost. And then I have here the super Huffman ghost, and you can see the difference. So, oh, there's a huge difference. So Huffman really brings out a lot. When this, when this girl was a baby, all this right here, all this stuff was orange. It's and still I mean, very, it's still very orange. This isn't, this is dull compared to how it was. It's, I mean, it was bright. The, the orange is still coming through pretty well. So what we're trying to do is, uh, in the next one, I'll show you here, but uh, I want to bring Orange Dream into it, Yellow Belly, um, possibly Inchy, some of the enhancing genes. Um, I have a normal Huffman girl at home that I actually won uh, Miguel's auction, the scaleless head. So scaleless head, what I've no from the research I've done, it kind of enhances stuff. You know, with certain genes, it kind of yeah. makes clean, cleans them up. And so I want to try that and see if maybe the scaleless head will bring that color and keep it out more. Um, so then this project was about 10 years in the making, and I'll, like you said, you'll do some pictures and stuff, but. This right here is the Huffman Pied. So this animal right now, it's hard to really tell um, the color and stuff because she is a little older. But if you really look closely, you see a lot more of the oranges that kind of hold through. Um, what What are the markers here that you see that, that tell you this is Huffman? A lot of the coloring. The co mostly the coloring. Yes. There's, no, there's nothing like subtle in the head pattern or anything. It's, mo it's about the color. Yeah. and then Next to it, if you put it next to a normal pied, it's something you'll it'll pop, the color is definitely a little brighter. But as they get older, even in the single gene Huffman, they lose color. So they almost end up looking like a normal ball python unless you have an eye. What are these pictures that we're looking at so here? So these are siblings of this girl right here. Um, you can see one that's, you know, 50-50, and then you see one that's heavily patterned. Um, and you can really see like the pigment, the contrast, the different colors. Uh, when you look at that, you can see the darks of the normal pieds that come through, but also the yellow, the oranges, the blushing. So what we're trying to do is, depending on how the show goes, but JKR has an orange dream pied combo that I want to try to get to influence this and try to get that oranges to pop more. You know, maybe with that orange dream, it'll keep it throughout its life and not fade out as much. Uh, but the single gene Huffman is really cool as a baby. But once they reach that 800 gram, you know, size, it's really hard to see the, the subtle differences between the two. If you put a normal and a Huffman together, you can tell, you know, you can see the differences. But when it's separate, it's really hard to pick up. It's kind of very subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. And I'm trying to, you know, pay more attention and really learn it, um, you know, and the differences. But honestly, with mine, I, you know, I get home, I work six days a week, 12 hour days. I get home, I'm cleaning, feeding. I, you know, hang out with them. I have a cart that I clean, spray it down with F10, wipe it down between each animal, um, let them cruise around while I'm cleaning their tub and changing their water and stuff like that. Sometimes, you know, wife will walk in and I see, and I look down and I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> so, you know, it's around the bottom of the cart or something like that. So I try to spend quality time with the animals. You know, so much of the actual sitting and, you know, staring at them, studying them, and really trying to pick up the subtle differences. But as babies, it's really, you know, once they pop. But as you can tell with the super Huffman between the Huffman, there's the, the differences. Awesome, man. So. Well, those are beautiful animals, man. You got a good, you got a good vibe. You. You, I think you're on the right track to being where, where you want to be, I think. Yeah. My, you know, I always watch everybody's YouTube videos and seeing, you know, JKR's like facility and that. That's like my dream. So it's, 
it's definitely cool when you come to you know Pomona and you see all these guys face to face. You're like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, I see that video. Oh, I watched it. You know what I mean? So my wife is always like, babes, come on, like you know what I mean? Because I want to walk around and meet people and talk and. And that's the best thing about this industry is, you know, honestly, like, you know, being cool. Jimmy's helped me start, you know, this and get to where I am, you know, and meet different people and, you know. Everybody helping each other out. Yeah, like it's other industries, it's not like that. And there is a lot of, I feel like, the the bullies of the reptile community. but It happens, but I think for the most part, you're right. Yeah. It's mostly people trying to help each other out. You know, yeah, all and, you know, together. I'm always... You know, like I've had people at shows like, oh, do you have an extension cord? Yeah, yeah, I, I bring an extra. Or, hey, do you have a light? I forgot my light. Yeah, yeah, no problem, I got it. And my thing is, you know, it all evens out at the end. If you have a good friend, you take care of him when you need something, he'll be right there to help you. And it's not like, hey, you owe me this, or it's, it evens out. That's good. So it doesn't matter, you know, who's up or who's down or whatever. It's, it's I like just it. a friendly community. I like it. I like it, man. That's good stuff, dude. Thanks for coming on, James. Yeah. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, right, man. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. It means you're actually going to make it to the bloopers, maybe. The bloopers are usually really funny. I don't remember if these ones are funny or not. I didn't check back to see if it was going on. Uh, thank you, James, for doing the show. And next week, we'll be speaking with Josh Dovenberger of Phantom Dragons. And he's going to be showing us uh, some really cool dragons, believe it or not. And uh, it should be quite nice. Mm -hmm. Until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. I was trying not to look at the camera. I was trying to focus on the. Oh, look at you! Can, you're more than welcome to look at the camera. You want to say something to people? You look at the camera and uh, say it to them. The fire pinstripe. Oh, this, this whole thing is like... Okay. Hopefully that thing is done with its, its whole beep-like scenario where it's not going to be rolling by its beeping again. It would be nice. But... Oh, was that during one of your things? No, it wasn't. Oh. It, 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 like, it started doing it again right, like, they started back up right after Jeff's interview. Oh. Which was perfect, because it was after. And there you go. I didn't know, so I brought this, but I also have pictures, because the Huffman pie that I have, you can't really tell, but I have pictures that I can send you. Okay. So if you, however that'll you want be, That'll be after the fact. You can send me them, I'll put them up on the screen. That's what I figured. So I didn't know if you want me to just put that on the ground. Did you see me clapping like a fool just now? Did I do that already? Did I clap? I was clapping, okay. That's just the sync of all the... So what I'm looking at right now... Is that microphone on? Green light? Yeah. Maybe you would try to turn it on. Oh, kicking the camera like a newbie. Oh, man. Celtic roots. If that wasn't quite enough or you need a little more action, well, there's always the vlog channel that we put up a video on Monday and we'll put another one up on Friday and the link for that channel is always down in the description if you want a little bit more Cusco action, a little behind the scenes, a little bit of raw cut. Oh! Oh!